Hey, this is Jack with YouTube user Rocky Mountain Rails Limit, but uh, I guess I'll forever be known as uh, as Jack the Train Aviation and Elevator Guy, or you could refer to me as Jack Elevators, whatever works best for you. Mm -hmm. But, um, I'm sorry I haven't been uploading videos lately and that I do have a few videos from 2020 that I need to catch, catch up on. And I decided not to ooh, upload them. Um, and I'm not going to say why, 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 just for, or, or privacy reasons and, and to protect my privacy and, but well, you guys and, um, well, you guys and, uh, are probably wondering and why haven't I been uploading, uploading videos, videos lately? Well, I am not, well, like I said, I am not going to say why just to protect my privacy. So, and, but anyways, there are some, some things to reminisce is about, uh, 2020 and 2021 on um, is that, um, also in August of 2020, I went to the West Coast Railway Heritage Park in Squamish, British Columbia, and it was nice to see up close and in person and the, their artifacts, one of which was Canadian Pacific Royal Hudson 2860, and I even got to ring her bell. For those of you that are train fans and uh, that are from North Vancouver and are subscribed to my channel, I'm sure that you would like to see my video from Squamish, but don't know when it would be coming out. But if anything is not correct with my video, those or any of them, then let me know in the comments section below. I had have made a few ooh, ooh, visits to the Aspen Crossing Railway. Well, if you've ever driven on Highway 24, just south of Calgary, just uh, east of Okotoks, Alberta, near Mosley, Alberta, you would notice that there is a railway campground connected to the former Canadian Pacific Railway Lamont subdivision that is now or somewhat a part of the Aspen Crossing Railway a, with uh, a, a few locomotives and cars attached to, to the railway campground as well as a few uh, attractions. But uh, aside from that, nothing else really. Well, that would mean that you are just past Aspen Crossing.
a gentleman by the name of Jason Thornhill, and still is owned by Jason Thornhill. And uh, it all started on his family farm property back in 1999 when he started planting all the trees, flowers, and shrubs at Aspen Crossing. And, uh, and from there on, he's had to raise his money and then start buying the car cars from anywhere from BC Rail, CP, and and private owners and any oh, and the locomotives from um, and such. When it comes to the locomotive fleet, Aspen Crossing features a very interesting locomotive fleet with uh, diesel locomotives from Canadian National to Canadian Pacific, as well as one Canadian National 462 Pacific, number 5080, that is on loan from, that's right, the city of Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. And uh, I do understand that Aspen Crossing does have some intentions to restore it into operation even though some rail fans would say hey, that it is beyond repair, but that's not 100% accurate information, just depending on who you ask and whatnot. Like it or not, it is quite interesting because a lot of people do go to Aspen Crossing and ask, like, when is Canadian National 5080 going to run again? And the answer is unknown. Because, like, for one reason, the, um, the frame is, has rust holes, the tender would leak if it remains like this, the sheet metal actually would still be rusting away, and the feed water heater pump would leak if it remains like that when operating. But, uh... I think it's a good idea to try and get some outside contractors to try and restore that the best of anyone's ability. Please note that any dirty comments about anything that I post online or, or especially on YouTube or anywhere on social media, uh, your comments can be removed and blocked as a fair and clear disclaimer about any comments with any th on anything that I post. If you don't have anything nice to say, then don't say anything at all. And in November and December 2020, for Fired Up for the Canadian Pacific Holiday Train, it was none other then the Canadian Pacific Empress 2816 that was fired up just to improve her mechanical condition. And I saw it. It, not in person, though, oh, but virtually. So, if, so I mean, I know that Canadian Pacific is her earnestly merging the Kansas City Southern Railway and that Canadian National tried to offer more money to Kansas City Southern with the merger, but the United States government was like, sorry, we're not, not buying it, and we are, we're, we're just... We are, are just going to, like, we're not buying it, and your bid is too complex. So they preferred with CP's bid, because, and when they did, that was when they, and at the moment they said that we're still interested, that was when CP he stepped in, and it turned out, and so here's how it all happened. Canadian Pacific had a problem. That was, they couldn't get anywhere south of Kansas City. Canadian National had the same problem. They couldn't get anywhere south of Kansas City. 
So the two companies were fighting over the Kansas City and Southern Railway, which is actually a still running south between Kansas City and Mexico City. And it was an epic battle, like Baron versus Baron, tycoon against tycoon, in, in one of the greatest battles of all time to take, take to fight over one other, um, one American railroad to take, take, merger, and take, take, receive ownership of that asset to specifically to create the very first railroad network linking Canada, linking Canada, United States, and Mexico. It is going to be a massive, massive, the very first in all of Canadian history. Like it's like it's never been done before with it's kind of kind of a very first for Canadian history. And most importantly of all, oh oh you need to get sharehold from the FRA. And under an agreement, Canadian Pacific and Kansas City Southern decided to change both of their names, names and and team up up with the mergers and with and it's a very catchy one. Canadian Pacific Kansas City Southern or Canadian Pacific Kansas or CP Kansas City for short. So and that's all how it happened. And I understand that it that there is this that there's still this long term nation to whether or not that that to whether or not that Kansas City Southern is going to take take to to take to the whole of of having Canadian Pacific be shared with the on their tracks so that Canadian National doesn't own that asset as that Canadian Pacific would be owning that asset themselves and CN was eliminated and Canadian National shareholders are not happy with their own CEO John Jacques Rouet and well and Keith Creel Canadian Pacific CEO is the winner of the fights so far and has ended up with a KCS, and mainly because, as for one reason, because he has a much bigger advantage over CN, even though CN is a Canadian National is a larger company than Canadian Pacific is. Canadian Pacific being a large be, be, Canadian Pacific having a lot much bigger advantage over Canadian Pacific because they can get their trains into Kansas City. Now, like it or not. That would be would be quite complex to explain to explain, but but anyway, that is is what I have for now. But if anyone has any further comments about that or any su further suggestions, leave them down uh, about the uh, about those, especially even the mergers or any further questions about how that all works. Leave a comment down below in the video, and I would would try as best I can to explain it, how it all works, how it all would work. Anyway, thanks guys.